Okay. Um, hello, my name is Kathy Astor. I am a product and service manager at Stanford University Libraries. And today I'm going to be giving um, a demo of our new image viewer um, at Stanford. But um, before I really get started, I wanna provide a little bit of context that I think uh, will hopefully be helpful to folks. So, we have a viewer for all of our content uh, deposited to the Stanford Digital Repository um, that we uh, locally refer to as SUL Embed. The, the SUL is, stands for Stanford University Libraries, and uh, it's an embeddable viewer, you know, embeddable on different publishing platforms. So that's why we, that's why we call it that. Um, what you're looking at right here is the Sewell, the new Sewell Embed viewer in an exhibit. And we'll explore that uh, in, a, in a little bit after I provide some more context. So um, our, we, we are using a couple of different viewers. We are using this new viewer and we are using a similar viewer which, um, which leverages uh, the universal viewer. Um, and we also, our content delivery is backed by various pieces of our infrastructure, including um, a streaming server set up for all of our audio and video content. So um, we're using this new viewer for all of our image-based content, and we'll be able to drill down into that a little bit. The, um, the older Sewell Embed viewer that still rely, relies on the open source universal viewer is being used for 3D uh, PDF um, uh, and some other, I think, like uh, downloadable files um, and, and also for the audio and video. Um, along with our paired with our streaming service. So I just wanted to be really clear to people what it what it's being used for. Um, and by the way, a lot of the contents of this uh, demo that I'm giving today um, are I have a um, YouTube playlist and there are two tutorial videos um, that directly relate to what I'm going to be showing and I will make sure that I get that playlist link in the, in the um, chat when I'm done. Um, so, like I said, you are, oh, and then I should mention all the Mirador 3 stuff. So, um, Stanford has been a leader in uh, the Mirador development community um, and an active participant. Um, earlier this year, there was a community sprint to um, create version three of the Mirador viewer. And as, as soon as our development team rolled off of that community sprint and had about a week of a breather, we um, jumped right in to, to this, to a four week, a recent four week work cycle, um, which culminated in the release of this this version of our viewer, which um, integrates Mirador 3. Um, that was pushed to prod on the 1st of July um, of this year. So um, let's just take a little tour through this right now. Um, so what you're seeing here is the viewer for an object in an exhibit. But it's important for me to really make clear that the viewer is the viewer is the viewer. So <laughs> here is the same object in our online library catalog called SearchWorks. So you're seeing the viewer here as well. It's the same item. And then if you go to what uh, we call our Perl pages, persistent URL pages for the Stanford Digital Repository, you are seeing the same the same item again um, in the same viewer. So I just wanted to be wanted to be clear about that. So we'll come back and and look at uh, the same item that's in an exhibit. Um, and the reason why I created um, our user user sort of tutorials navigation tutorials for these is that the user interface is pretty radically different. 
um, from our previous stool and bed viewer. And we knew that it would be um, confusing to some people and kind of really disconcerting. And we wanted to make sure that they had, um, that they had the appropriate sort of reference uh, tutorial to refer to. So here, if we hover over the, um, you can toggle on the sidebar. Um, and you see this default information panel, which shows up which um, lists um, the persistent URL to the Stanford Digital Repository and then lists um, all of the met metadata. And some of it looks like, yeah, I, I hoped I picked something that was in where the metadata was in fairly decent shape um, that you can see here. Um, the uh, rights information panel is here. Uh, this is um, allows you to navigate by thumbnail or by a more compact list um, to which you can you can create custom labels for but um, most people typically don't um, I'm going to um, talk about this search a little bit a little bit later um, because we also have incorporated as we did in the previous viewer, the IIIF content search API to enable full text search of um, content that meets some baseline criteria. And this is one such item. But I should also mention, if we just look at another um, item, and we're gonna drill down into this item too, if we have enough time, I'm trying to watch the time. Um, but you'll notice when we toggle the sidebar on this item, um, the search icon is not displaying. That's because this content um, is not available for full, full text search. It's image heavy. It hasn't been, it hasn't been OCR'd. So, um, and we'll come back to that. So here we are here. So you, um, you can also collapse the sidebar and Okay, so if we go up here in the upper right hand corner, this is where you have the opportunity to select the view, whether a single page for items that are books or book like. Um, there I just selected book view. Let's get to some actual text. There we go. That's um, so you can um, toggle back and forth like that. You can also um, select gallery view, which is really helpful if you're trying to um, navigate through something that has a, a lot of pages in it. So the other thing that you can do here is you can uh, choose to have the thumbnails displayed at the bottom of the viewer and also on the side if you would like. And that can be turned off. Okay, let's see here. Then the other thing that you can do is we have some share and download, um, share and download uh, options here. You can share the link by copying this URL here. And um, you can also embed the viewer in a publishing platform of your choice. Um, and you have a number of different size options to choose from. If you click on a different size, that will um, change the embed code accordingly. And um, you can just copy the code there and paste it into your publishing platform. Um, we also, as in our previous viewer, provide the opportunity to drag and drop the triple IF icon to um, put this into a different triple IF compatible viewing environment. Uh, let's see. Um, you can also, of course, go to full screen. Um, and you can navigate forward and back. 
It's not too exciting at the beginning here. Sorry, there we go. Um, forward and backwards. Um, you can zoom in and you can reset the zoom. Okay, and then you also have this navigation panel that um, that appears at the bottom of the viewer. I think that's pretty good. I wanted to, um, cause I'm, my time seems to be going okay. I want to go over to this item here because there's something really cool that I wanted to show you. I'm going to be making um, a third video for that playlist, which includes some tips and tricks for advanced navigation. Um, this is a, this is a, um, ooh, my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully everybody can still, there we go. Um, this is a, an atlas from the David Rumsey map collection that we have in the Stanford Digital Repository. We have a partnership with David Rumsey. Um, and David, um, is very particular. <laughs> and David believes that even for bound objects that there should be um, there should be unique descriptive metadata for each page in every atlas. Therefore, he has created that. We have not, we don't have the resources to do <laughs> that kind of in-depth metadata work, but um, we're grateful that he has done this. And here's a cool thing that you can do in the viewer. So you see here, um, this little word left, we're looking at the metadata for the left-hand page here. But let's go ahead and move this panel to the right-hand side. And let's change this. So now what we're doing is we're looking at the metadata for the right-hand page. But we also can see the metadata for the left-hand page at the same time. So this is just a, a fun extra thing um, for us when we have collection materials like this and we have thousands and thousands and thousands of items of, of content um, resulting from our partnership with David Rumsey so, and his map collection. So that is that bell and whistle. Let's come back to the exhibit and I wanna talk a little bit about full text search. Um, I will also provide a link to this exhibit because as you can see, uh, we did create it as a demonstration exhibit for full text search. Um, so we have a list of criteria for content in the Stanford Digital Repository, uh, criteria that must be met in order for content for full text search uh, to be available for that content in the viewer. Um, basically means that we have to have page level OCR, um, either Alto 2 or Alto 3. Um, we can also accommodate um, full text that, page level full text that isn't OCR, but you don't get the benefit of hit highlighting as you do with OCR content. So let's take a look. Um, so we have, we have two things. We have something called search within and search across. So maybe let's, let's do search across first and then I'll come back and we'll look at search within. I'm gonna try and finish in, in about five minutes if I can here. So um, here in fielded search, um, we've added the ability to, to do full text search. Um, and let's go ahead and search for the word salmon. Okay, you see that there are um, 37 results here. And my favorite, Gotti and the Govna, is here. Um, you have the ability to search for salmon in the document text. We'll go there in a second. Um, or also, some, some items here contain um, this link, which shows sample matches in the document text. Not all items have that for complex reasons that I won't get into here, but every item has the ability to search for um, the, the keyword in the document text. So let's go there. 
And you, you can see that this is a predetermined search, right? And you see the, the, um, the search icon off, off on the left here. It's a predetermined search and you see that the first, the first result is highlighted in yellow on the left on this sidebar navigation, right? And that companion first term is also highlighted in the text. Um, the quality of the highlighting, in other words, whether it, whether it lands exactly on top of the keyword or not, are dependent upon the quality of the OCR and whether or not um, how accurate the uh, page coordinates are. We have another um, collection which we sent to a vendor, sent off to a vendor and lo and behold all the hit highlighting is like slightly off by about two letters and um, we learned that that was due to um, the not as great quality OCR. And um, we did this in-house, and we're happy to see that it looks pretty good. Um, you can see then, as you navigate through, so if I, if I click on the second result, it turns yellow, right? That's the featured or the main um, result that you're looking at. And you can see that the companion item turns yellow as well. Um, I think... Uh, let me show everybody one other thing here. If I click on the link for the item itself, here you have to do a little bit of navigation. You navigate to the search and you see instead of it being a predetermined search, it's, um, uh, this is a suggested search instead. So if I didn't want to search for salmon here, and instead I wanted to search for fish, I could do that. And, and there you go. Um, so this is search across um, for all of the items in a given exhibit. Real quickly, in the last couple of minutes that I have here, um, Let's go ahead and we'll just go to the persistent URL page. So people, or even, I can even do this on our library catalog page. It's, it's totally, it totally works the same and let me go ahead and do that. Let's say that somebody, somebody has stumbled across this and they've watched the tutorial or they're working with a curator or they know our systems, right? and they want to do their own search simply within this item, it's what we call search within, they can also do that here. And again, um, just because I'm familiar with this one, enter the, the term salmon, and here you can see all of the search results. So I guess that is basically it. Um, and now I would be really happy to take any questions. I'll start then, Kathy. Uh, I believe that um, this is the first, the first release of Mirador 3. Work is continuing on development there, isn't it? Um, well, we're not doing development right now because how our teams work is we we work on one thing at a time. <laughs> um, for for each each team works on one one thing at a time, right? So um, right now we're working on something else. We're not working on Mirador. Um, I I know that the um, I know that the community is working on things. I know that we were the first institution who who used Mir who, who integrated Mirador 3 um, uh, into a viewer and released it into production mm -hmm. so yep. uh, as an FYI and and Kathy brought that up there is a uh, there is a slack channel the triple I in the triple IF server I believe that is Mirador, we have been tracking the process, the progress of the Mirador project. Uh, that was a very good sprint cycle, I believe, uh, brought in a couple of uh, 
coders and developers from Europe who wanted to be part of that process as well. So uh, that is an interesting development effort. And your search, Kathy, do you know what you're using for the for your search engine that's backing up this search within? Solar. Solar? Yep. Yeah. Are the pages structured in METS? No, they are, um, you're talking about the OCR? It's Alto XML. And I believe, I believe this content that I demoed is Alto version three. Very good. Um, Are there other questions? Sounds like no. Le 